Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss the concept of Prebet Singer hypothesis. Let's get started. So here what we do is that we do have two set of prices. The first set is the price of primary good. Price of primary goods. Then we have price of manufactured goods. So we are going to compare these three, these two things. So as per this hypothesis, it's been suggested that the price of primary goods, this is something that would tend to decline related to the prices of the manufactured goods. This is what is happening over time. So when you say primary goods, what you consider is raw materials, agricultural products, etc. When, when, it, comes, when it comes to manufactured goods, you are dealing with the industrial good industrial goods okay now this particular thesis or hypothesis has been developed by two famous economists Raoul Prebisch and Hans Singer in 1950s and 1960s respectively and this particular theory has been found to be influential when it comes to shaping certain debates policies etc related to international trade and development and that is what we are going to discuss in today's session let's deal with these so, a per later decline in the prices of the primary goods, that means the agricultural goods, uh, raw materials kind of things, this has caused some negative effects on developing economies. So, fall in price of primary goods. So, this has got some negative influence on effect on developing economies why because we could see that these developing economies are the primary exporters of primary commodities okay so these developing economies rely hugely on these primary goods and they are exporting these goods and they are getting some foreign exchange earnings and the earnings that they get earnings from exporting primary goods This is the main, one of the main source of earnings for least developed countries or LDCs. Okay. And also when it comes to single prebish hypothesis, this is being used to support the policies related to import substitution and export promotion. And what is import substitution? Import substitution means that earlier you were importing some commodities, but now you are producing the very same commodities in your own domestic territory. And what is export promotion? Export promotion means you go for certain policy so as to boost the production of certain commodities that you are exporting. Okay, so by saying that, let's see the assumptions of this particular theory. It says that as income rises when it comes to advanced economies, there would be a shift in demand. And how is the demand shifting? It is from primary products to manufactured products. And this has been explained by Engels law. So Engels law is the main reason for this kind of a demand shift in advanced economies or industrialized economies or developed economies as a result of increase in income. So it says that with rise in income, there is a demand shift from primary to manufactured goods. Okay. Now, and this demand, this demand, you could see that there is a slow rise in this demand when it comes to products in 
the developed economies the slow rise in demand for products in developed nations or advanced nations and when it comes to export market for the product of ldcs and what does this export consist of it consists of primary goods isn't it so because we are dealing with the ldcs this is something which is very much competitive and when it comes to the export market for of products of the developed countries and what are these product consist of these are manufactured goods these manufactured goods market export market of the very same it is considered to be monopolistic what is monopolistic it means single seller okay now here we consider that when it comes to ldcs or least developed economies or under developed economies here the wages and prices are very low and when it comes to ldcs again we could see that substitutes for products of ldcs this would be reducing demand so whenever you have more substitute when the number of substitute is more substitutes if this is more what happens is that this will lead to a fall in the demand of commodity that you have in question isn't it and the benefit of increased productivity is not passed by producers of the manufactured goods that you have in developed economies to the least developed economies to lower prices that is another important problem so this is considered to be one of the primary problems that you have in uh, trade relationship between advanced economies and the least developed economies and also we could see that economic growth in under developed economies is something that is indicated by income terms of trade so by telling that when it comes to the theoretical side data has been collected so it is usually from data you go for a conclusion isn't it so here also you have gone for empirical evidence so that means data is collected and it is being put for analysis so data is collected related to the terms of trade and here we could see that the evidence is related to terms of trade this was moving against the developing nations and what are what are developing nations who are these they are exporters of primary goods isn't it exporters of primary goods now and this was been something that happens that happened continuously and on this basis of export statistics especially when it was related to us uh, sorry uk between the period 1870 and 1940 prebish was uh he has gone for a demonstration and he demonstrated that the terms of trade has got some secular tendency to move against primary product and also it was at the same time moving in favor of the manufactured goods or the capital goods so that means the terms of trade was acting in favor of the advanced economy so prebish uh, found that as per prebish terms of trade was moving in favor of moving in favor of advanced nations and at the same time it was moving against least developed countries so these are the two points here now this view point this conclusion had been supported by singer so that is why you consider singer's hypothesis and prebish hypothesis together and you call it as prebish singer hypothesis and this is something that says that peripheral or ldcs so these these two people have identified ldcs in the name of peripheral so the peripherals or ldcs had been exporting some huge amounts of the primary commodities and why they are exporting huge amount of the very same because in order to get some manufactured goods from advanced nation they had to go for huge export of primary commodities 
and these industrialized nations were trying to exploit the advanced nations nations to an extent were exploiting ldcs okay so deterioration in terms of trade was being considered to be one of the major problems that was being faced by the ldcs and you know that ldcs means least developed countries which had so many so many problems and when it comes to this kind of deteriorating trade this again acts as a factor that would be inhibiting the growth of ldcs yes so these two people prabhesh and singer they always maintain that there has been some technical progress in the advanced economies advanced economies were progressing so uh, developed nations nations uh, they had some progress they had some progress but they are not ready to share this progress with ldc so the case with ldcs means they are always suffering loss and they were deteriorating and industrialist nation always try to maintain this monopoly so the, why they were progressing because they had some monopoly over the manufactured commodity isn't it so they were controlling the production of industrialist commodity and for the very same reason they could make some manipulation over the prices of these commodities so as to make the terms of trade move in favor of them and when it move in favor of them we could see that it would be moving against the interest of ldcs and this would be creating some deteriorating effect on ldcs now you could see that except the success of some opec nations like you know that opec is an organization which stands for the oil exporting kind of thing and except the success of some opec in increasing prices of crude Uh, since mid 1970s when it comes to international prices of primary goods there was a relative decline okay when it comes to goods like plantation products minerals forest products there exists to be a relative decline here and what happens as a result of the very same is that the terms of trade had remained unfavorable to ldcs or developing economies now singer Uh, has pointed out here that the reason increase in the debt problem of ldcs and why debt is coming debt is coming because you are um, received is something that is less than your expenditure and this will be making you to go for borrowing and when you borrow what happens is that it will lead to debt isn't it so this problem has it parted against uh, it has imparted another twist when it comes to the hypothesis of secular deterioration of terms of trade and this had happened for two ways as per these two people firstly it happened as a result of a high proportion of proceeds from export are not available for imports okay you are exporting more but you are not getting uh that much of import because to get a little bit of import you have to export more so a high proportion of proceeds the money that you get from export are not available for import here secondly what happens is that when it comes to ldcs there was an increased pressure to increase export why if you need to repay your debts if you want to repay your already existing debts which was on account of your the international monetary fund you need to go for more export and this had created a pressure on these developed economies so they were made to compete with some poor economies in order to enlarge their export earnings so this was a kind of a horrible situation that was happening and this had made declining the price of export products of these poor nations because the ldcs were competing with the poor eco- economies to increase their exports 
so that had created a bad situation for the poor nations okay moving to the policy implications of this famous hypothesis we could see that this had got a long term implications so the long term deterioration in terms of trade of primary products is something that has been identified by charles kindleberger as well so he he says that it is something that is unavoidable for the terms of trade to turn against the primary producing nations that means the ldcs and why this is due to operation of enkel's law we have already explained that and when it comes to enkel's law it says about the demand for commodities uh, uh, when it comes to needed for uh, bare substance of the people this would be increasing less than proportionately while when you compare the demand when you compare the very same with the demand for luxury commodity and this would be increasing in more than proportionate manner so whenever this happens this will be leading to economic growth economic uh, standard of living etc so why because you are reducing your uh, uh, demand for goods that are needed for substance but at the same time you are increasing your demand for luxury commodities isn't it so in 1950s when it comes to the very same uh, probish as well as uh, singer they have referred to this kind of a tendency uh that and uh, they had referred to this uh, and they had actually uh, gone for some question they have questioned the classical proposition okay the classicals were uh, some school of thought that had given their own interpretations and ideas regarding trade and with the evidences that prebish and singer got from their own study they have they started questioning the classical school of thought uh, and their interpretation regarding trade so they question classical proposition as well as its impact support for colonial pattern of trade as per uh, this we could see that the productivity is something that would be increasing faster when it comes to industrialized nation what what you say industrialization this means advanced nations okay so which you call as the industrial center and you compare the productivity of the very same with the primary producing country the uh, the nations which would be producing the primary uh, items like raw materials etc you name these nations as a periphery now you have to the center and periphery okay so what happens is that the terms of trade should have moved in favor of south given the factors of terms of trade and competition and this is what is told by the classical approach but we could see that the south the the classical uh, school of thought again they told that the south could get some fruits of technical progress when the very same is taking place in the industrial sector and this will be happening through free trade this will be happening through specialization with our going for industrialization etc so this is what uh, the classical school of thought uh, was saying but when it comes to the actual evidence the actual evidence was not supporting the uh, the very same idea with respect to actual evidence what we could see is that the primary producing nations were adverse to pursue a vigorous policy and what is this vigorous policy related to this policy is related to the industrialization and this had been advised with suspension of some free play of international market forces so that is what we could see in reality that's all about today's sessions regarding the discussion on singer prebish hypothesis you can like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos also you can be a part of my telegram community to discuss your doubts i'll be providing the link of that in the description box also you can download the learn economy app i will also provide the link of that in the description box that's all for today thank you for watching and again i request you to like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos